Hello everyone and welcome to another session of computational algebraic geometry. Today we're going to learn how to make our own Grobner basis for a given ideal. So before we do anything formal, let me briefly recall uh, Buchberger's criterion for detecting a Grobner basis. Remember, so if I have a sequence of polynomials, which is a basis for an ideal, so then this uh, sequence of polynomials gives me a Grobner basis, if and only if all the s polynomials have a remainder 0. And this suggests already how we could start with some basis, maybe not, not a Grobner basis, and then complete it to a Grobner basis by simply adding these remainders, so if they're not 0. So then the idea is So if we start with some basis G for an ideal, we compute all the remainders upon polynomial division for the S polynomials S, G, I, G, J, and then we add all the non-zero terms to our basis. So what happened is that by default, all the S polynomials, S, G, I, G, J's, will now reduce to zero modulo this larger generating set for the ideal. But what about the new S polynomials that we have to consider? So applying Buchberger's criterion, we also need to check if the new polynomials give us some S polynomials uh, that we can still reduce to zero. So there is nothing free here. We also have to compute these S polynomials and reduce all of them modulo G prime. Okay, so the process starts again. We compute these reduction modulo G prime and then add all of them to G prime. And then we have a larger generating set for the ideal and then repeat. So the question is, will this process terminate? So to see that this process should terminate, we can consider the following. So let's say we start with g0, let's say that was our g, and then we obtain g1, which was our g prime, and then as we repeat this process, we get larger and larger generating sets for the ideal. So what we can do is that consider the ideal generated by the leading terms of g0. So maybe I write this down. And this will lie in the ideal generated by the leading terms of the basis G1, and so on. So this process will continue. Of course, all of these things will lie in the ideal of leading terms of I. And then what we need to show is that, in fact, at each step, if the basis has grown larger, then the ideal of leading terms has grown larger. And when you show this, then you can use what's called the ascending chain condition which implies that no ascending sequence of ideals can grow uh, larger and larger indefinitely. So when something grows, stops growing larger, we sometimes say that it stabilizes. So this sequence of ideals stabilizes, they stay the same, which suggests, implies that the sequence of generators actually stabilize. And that can only happen if our residues for each of the S polynomials are all zero. Right, so this, this should then be a method of computing a Grobner basis. Okay, so this was the sketch of the idea of how to compute a Grobner basis. For the next of this session, let's just uh, carefully write down an algorithm and then fill out some of the details, such as this explain ascending chain condition, give a proof. It's very simple now from what we know and then discuss whether or not we can, could have done better here. Um, maybe we're sort of adding all these S polynomials in bulk, we could have done better, so we will discuss this at the end. Okay, let's write down what we just discussed in pseudocode. So I'm saying, you give me a basis for an ideal. And I'm going to give you another basis, let's call it G prime, which will be a Grobner basis for I. And the way I'm doing it is I'm going to extend your basis so that hi will be gi for i less than or equal to a. So all these first elements remain untouched. I just add extra elements completing your basis to an Grobner basis. 
Okay, now let's set up. So I'm going to keep track of my bases and I want to see whether or not these bases grow. So we just say at the beginning of our loop, we will take uh, our, the new bases we've obtained and we will declare that to be our old bases. That's kind of the loop. And what we are going to do is that for each PQ in the old bases with PQ different, we would like to do the following. Compute the remainder of the S polynomial, reduce modulo the old bases, and if R is non-zero, then let the new basis be the old basis union R. So I'm here being a little bit sloppy with sequences and sets. Uh, I just mean add R to the end. On the other hand, of course, I don't want repeated elements, although it won't hurt really. And once you exit this for loop, this means you've take, computed every possible S polynomial from your old basis you reduce them and added any remainders to g new. But if g new and g old are the same, that means all the residues were zero, and then you can exit uh, the entire algorithm and just return the new basis that you have the new or old, they were the same. This, is, this must be a Grodner basis by Buchberger's criterion, and we're done. Uh, I have my intonation incorrect, so I move this until to the same level as repeat, so that's this until stops repeat, and then we can return. And you see what's going to happen is that once I've computed all the reductions, at first step I expect the old bases to grow, so that this check will fail, and then I will come back to this repeat step. I will declare my old bases to be the new basis that is now enlarged, and then for every pair we're going to recompute these S polynomials, do the reductions, and then enlarge the bases if necessary. Clearly this is not very efficient in any way, however it's very simple. And let's postpone issues about efficiency to later time, but let's discuss and prove that this algorithm must terminate. So we've discussed the strategy of this proof early on. We need to show that the ideal of leading terms must stabilize. So let's look at what happens when we don't exit the loop. So you see that if at the end of the for loop, so let's go back up and look at this. So the for loop is this one here. So at the end of the for loop, I've computed all the reductions of the S polynomials. So if at this stage, G new is G old, then the algorithm terminates. And if it does not, we will show that the ideal of leading terms must grow. So what happens here is that we have added a remainder to G new. By definition of a remainder, each term of this remainder will be indivisible by the leading terms of the dividing polynomials g old. So that when I add this remainder, uh, I must be extending the ideal of leading terms. So the leading term of the remainder for any one of the remainders will uh, extend the ideal. So it suffices to add one. Since ideals cannot increase indefinitely in a polynomial ring, by the ascending chain condition, at some stage g old must equal g new and then we exit the algorithm. So that shows termination. Uh, so let's prove the ascending chain condition with what we know since we are using this. So the ascending chain condition says that if you have a sequence of increasing ideals inside of a polynomial ring, so increasing means they're contained in one another, then eventually all of the ideals are equal to one another. So that there exists an index, so just afterwards all of them equal to this i m sub zero. So this is an ascending chain. And we say this ascending chain stabilizes. So what we do is that we construct the union of all of these ideals. And it's an exercise to show that this is an ideal. But since it's an ideal, I can use Hilbert's basis theorem, which says that uh, there exists a finite basis. So this is Hilbert's basis theorem in general. Uh, for monomial ideals, this was Dixon's lemma. So upstairs, we actually used Dixon's lemma since our ideals were leading ideals of leading terms. So these are monomial ideals. 
But anyway, Dixon's lemma implied the Hilbert basis theorem quite easily, so it's okay. Now what you do is that we, you say that there exists an index. So for each i, there exists an index mi, such that gi must live inside mi. I mean, since this union is just obtained by these ever-increasing ideals, uh, at some point, this gi is contained in one of those ideals. And then what you do is that let m0 be the maximum of all of these indices. So then all of these elements are inside i of m0, which then, of course, has to be the union i, since that was a basis. And that concludes the theorem. For every other m larger than m0 by this containment property, those ideals will also contain gi's and will equal the ideal i. OK, so we made it official. Uh, we have Buchberger's algorithm, which terminates after finitely many steps. By Buchberger's criterion, the output will be a Grubner basis. The only thing that remains to discuss is that this thing can be easily simplified by what we know uh, in terms of performance. Let's simplify it in that regard. OK, so we will make two quick remarks regarding how to improve the performance of the Buchberger's algorithm. Keep in mind that this is an active research area, so if you want to make it better and better, then it's an endless process. But there are just two simple modifications that we can do. So let's get them while we're here. So first of all, is that if you have SPQ, which was zero modulo G old, then for the same SPQ, the new reduction will still be zero. So this you can take as an exercise. So this has nothing to do with Grubner basis. I've just enlarged my basis by adding new elements to uh, the last terms. That's what matters. So then when you execute the division algorithm, you will never reach these last terms. What this means is that if you've found a PQ which already reduced to zero a modulo some all basis, then you never have to reduce it again. So you can skip that pair when you're executing this for loop. Which means that whenever an SPQ reduces to zero, that pair can be removed for our further checks. This will significantly improve the amount of checks you have to do. At least one can imagine that this should be so. And the second step that you can do is for simplification, we were adding all the residues all at once in bulk. You don't have to do this. So whenever you find whenever you find a non-zero remainder, what you should do is just add R to the old basis and then check all the non-zero S polynomials from before and check all the new S polynomials that you have to compute uh, that are attained by R and some other polynomial from G old. This should also make it much simpler. You will reduce the number of times that you have to re-enter the loop and keep uh, doing certain reductions. And it will be a good exercise here to implement Buchberger's algorithm, as stated here, with these performance improvements and with any other performance improvements that you can come up with. Next up, we will talk about a slightly different version of a Grubner basis, a small modification that will make it unique for an ideal. And more importantly, after this, we will talk about applications of Grubner basis to interesting problems.